Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Yeah. I'm Jason. I'm Kitten. Uh, and we are the Yahoo Notor YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are starting a brand new series here of a great book that I think everybody will be super excited in. And without further ado, let us begin with the book of Tobiah, or Tobit, as a lot of people have called it. And um, there is, we have the Sefer version, and we also have the Yah's scripture version, which we will provide in the link. You can actually download this entire book. It is completely free of charge, and it is an amazing read. Okay, gentlemen, you ready? Yep. The books, the book of the words of Tobiah, son of Tobiel, the son of Can Kaniel, the son of Adiel, the son of Gabael, son of Raphael, of Regiel, of the seed of Ashel, of the tribe of Naphtali who in the time of Shalmaneser, sovereign of Ashur, was led captive out of Thisbe, which is to the right hand of the, that city, in Galil, above Ashur, which is properly called Naphtali. All right, so what do we make of this right out of the gate? Uh, so those guys from the tribe of Ashur. The tribe of, it's Naphtali. Naphtali, yeah. Yeah, and so he goes all the way um, in and around. I mean, it, this, is, this leans his lineage all the way back there, so he's only... Um, He's only a few, uh, you know, generations away from this. All right, three. I, Tobiah, have walked all the days of my life in the ways of truth and righteousness. And I did many good works to my brothers and my nation who came with me to Nineveh, to the land of Ashur. And when I was in my own land, in the land of, in the land of Yisrael, being still young, all the tribe of my father, Naphtali, fell from the house of Jerusalem, which was, which was chosen out of all the tribes of Yisrael that all the tribes should slaughter there, where the Hayekil of the dwelling of the Most High was Kodesh and built forever and ever. What is a Hayekil? Uh, it's a temple. I think it's a temple. Yeah, the Hayekil is a temple. And um, and what we're talking about with this um, is he is part of the remnant or the people that used to keep the law, statutes, and commands. His family all kept the law, statutes, and commands. And he is now in captivity. And so he's, he's uh, about to give us this story. Now all the tribes which revolted together and the house of my father Naphtali slaughtered to the calf of Baal. But I alone went off to Jerusalem for the feast as it was given to all the people of Israel as an everlasting law, having the first fruits and tenths of increase which, with, which, uh, with that which was first shorn. And I gave them at the altar uh, to the Kohenim, the children of Aaron. All right, so... So, what do you guys get out of this so far? So this guy was like one of the people that kept the commands anymore. Yeah, he's a he's a uh, he's a rebel in the terms of being a rebel for Yahuwah, right? And so let's continue on. Seven. The first tenth part of all increase I gave to the sons of Aaron who served at Jerusalem. Another tenth part I sold away, and went and spent it every year at Jerusalem. And the third I gave to those to whom it was right as Deborah, my father's mother, had commanded me, because I was left an orphan by my father. Furthermore, when I came to manhood, I married Kana, my own relatives, and from her I brought forth Toby. And when we were carried away captive to Nineveh, all my brothers and those who were of my relatives ate of the bread of the Gentiles. But I kept myself from eating, because I remembered Elohim with all my heart. And the Most High gave me favor and kindness before Shalmaneser, so I was, so that I was his attendant. So, um, what do you, what do you guys? So the people who keep the laws seems like there's like a pattern here. Like we see it with Joseph, we see it with Daniel. The people who keep it, whose laws usually get blessed when they're in captivity. Yeah, they 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 get blessed when they're in captivity, definitely. Now, when Shalman Inser was dead, Sanherib his son reigned in his place, whose reign was troubled. So I could not go to Madai. Okay, so hold on. Do we do we? I think I missed it. I missed fourteen. I think so. Okay, I think I missed 14 because this was kind of important because this, this is part of the whole story. And I went to Madai and left 10 kickers of silver in trust with Gabel, Gabael, the brother of Gabiah, at Rages, a city of Madai. Now, when Shalmaneser was dead, Sanherib, his son, reigned in his place, whose reign was troubled, so I could not go to Madai. So he put 10 pieces of silver or 10, 10 kickers, which I guess is, is quite a bit, of silver in Madai, right, with his buddy. That's who he entrusted this with. This is very important for the story. 16. In the time of Shalmaneser, 
I did many kind of deal, deeds to my brothers and gave my bread to the hungry and my garments to the naked. And if I saw any of my nation dead or scattered around the walls of Nineveh, I buried them. All right, so this guy is doing what the Christians of today will refuse to do. He's obeying the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. For those who have never heard of the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, it begins in Genesis and, and ends in Deuteronomy for the what we call the Torah. Now, what he's talking about here, everything he's doing, when he's going out and he's uh, he gave bread to the hungry, that is a Torah command. That is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to feed the orphans, widows, and all that, that kind of gig. We're supposed to love our neighbor. We're supposed to take care of them. Everything he's doing here is uh, when, when he gave people garments when they were naked. That's Torah command, right? That, that's taking care of our neighbor. And then another big thing is we're supposed to bury our dead, right? We're not supposed to leave our dead overnight. If you hang a person in the tree, you're supposed to cut them down before night. Our creator does not want corpses hanging out all over the place. And so what he was doing is he's out burying dead people. Okay. And if San Herod the sovereign had slain any when he had come and fled from Yehuda, I buried them secretly. For in his wrath, he killed many, but the bodies were not found when they were sought for by the sovereign. And when the Ninevites went and complained of me to the sovereign, that I buried them and hid myself, understanding that I was sought for to be put to death, I withdrew myself for fear. Then all my goods were forcibly taken away. Neither was there any left to me beside my wife, Kana, and my son, Toby. So it seems as if because he was out keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, he fell under more evil because the people went and they, they, they took everything he had. And it says everything he had was taken away. Um, but the good news is they left his wife and his son, uh, which is, you know, that's super good. Can we please stop popping those knuckles right there? And 55 days had not passed before two of his sons killed him. And he's talking about the king. And they fled into the mountains of Ararat. And Eshkadon, his son, reigned in his place, who appointed Akikar, my brother Anel, son, over his father's accounts and over all his affairs. And with Akikar entreating for me, I returned to Nineveh. Now Akikar was cupbearer and keeper of seal and manager and overseer of the accounts. And Eshkadon appointed him, him next to him. And he was my brother's son. Okay, so we have um, to Tovi Yahu, and then we have his son, Tobit, right? Right, and then we have his nephew that's now like king. Yeah, and so this is, um, this is interesting because verse 1 says, the, the book of the words of Tobi Yah, son of Tobi El. But it kind of, this entire story is, at the beginning, it's his it's dad. His dad yeah. It's his Tobi El, who is um, telling us what's, what's happening here and that he's doing all of this stuff. Although, he may be writing it from his dad's perspective, um, writing it as his dad. But that is it, everyone, for the day on this. Um, these are going to be super short. Um, the point of all of this is that these people, all of the heroes that we know of and we read in these books, these are the extracurricular books that were pulled out of scriptures. And they all are very, very clear that we need to observe to keep, to honor, to respect the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. A lot of people will take our Messiah, Jesus the Christ, and they will take man-made doctrines that say you don't have to keep the laws. The laws are nailed to the cross. They, they believe even so much, which is completely satanic, is that Jesus died to end the laws. And they will, they will say that. And there is not a single scripture anywhere that supports that satanic viewpoint. And so what our hopes and our goals are is that we are out there hopefully teaching people and reading people, reading to you guys that about these laws, statutes, and commands that will enhance your life, that will increase your, your everything that you have. And so this is the story of, of Tobit and the story of Tobiah. And we will leave a download for anyone who wants to jump ahead and read the story or for anybody that wants a story or pass it on when you're done. But it is a fascinating story. And I believe we have 12 chapters in this. And so we have 12 days, 14. So we have 14 days that we will be talking and, and speaking with you guys on this. And hopefully it is a good story. We love you guys very much. We hope you have a wonderful first day. We hope you're not in a 501c3 man-made Sunday worshiping church. And have a good day. All right. Shalom. Shalom.